There you go. Again, good afternoon and welcome to uh, this uh, webinar uh, I entitled Crisis Proofing Your Future, A New Beast Guide to Investing in the Philippines. Uh, this is Sandoy. I am the Business Development and Market Education Head of uh, First Metro Securities Brokerage Corporation, uh, the stock brokerage arm of Metro Bank, the best managed bank in the Philippines. As far as uh, being a stock brokerage firm is concerned, we happen to be the best in the business. Back-to-back -back best broker in the Philippines, back-to-back -back best online broker in the Philippines, and back-to-back -back best online trading platform in the Philippines from various award-giving bodies. Um, uh, I'm doing this because, uh, again, I'd like people, I'd like family and friends uh, to be as, uh, as financially responsible as possible and uh, as, as, as they could. And uh, for them to be able to be better money managers. And again, I don't care if you guys are just students. I don't care if you guys are uh, uh, already working. I don't care if you guys are uh, investment savvy. But uh, this is something I know you guys will, uh, will appreciate. And uh, there, hold on. Again, that's me. And... Uh, I'm uh, licensed by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. I am licensed by uh, uh, the Securities Exchange Commission. And I am licensed by Bloomberg to do exactly this. Um, I'm licensed to talk about bonds. I'm licensed to talk about mutual funds. I'm licensed to talk about money market, stocks, and everything in between. Uh, I happen to be the director. Uh, a director of uh, the Bosconian International Chamber of Commerce and Canbeda Economics Alumni Association President uh, up until now. I am also the guy behind Let's Invest PH and at Let's Invest PH on Instagram. Of course, that's me and that's not me. And my job is basically to go pre COVID, my job is basically to go from campus to campus, uh, office to office, island to island and country to country, talking to Filipinos, young and old, about saving, investing, and everything in between. Um, I'm even, even, even during the lockdown, even during the, the, the ECQ and ECQ, I find myself uh, bouncing from, uh, from Zoom meetings to Zoom meetings, uh, WebEx, Hangouts, uh, Microsoft because people require, people demand, people request for things like this. And again, you guys are, are here uh, because uh, you would like to uh, learn. Let me just uh, admit a few people from the lobby. There you go. Again, because you guys would like to learn uh, saving and investing and everything in between. All right. So again, this is something I, I, I'd love you to appreciate. Uh, before we go complex, before we go complicated, before we talk about those complex stuff, I'd like to talk about history. I'd like to talk about the beginning. Uh, 2000 BC, the, the, there, were no, there were no diamonds. 2000 BC, there were no gold, silver, bronze, whatnot. 2000 BC, people were using plants, vegetables, stones, metals, animals to trade. 2000 BC, we were bartering uh, against each other. And 2000 BC, the most expensive item on earth happens to be salt. Up until now, people, you and me, we're, you're still feeling the effects of uh, this part of history because up until now, we still get paid with salarium. Salt, salary, uh, they, uh, they go hand in hand because, again, that's the reason why we are uh, using the word salary because people back then were working, people back then are getting paid with salt. Uh, the problem is, people back then, there were no bankers, there were no students, there were no, there were no business people. Back in the day, people were, were either farmers 
or fishermen or gatherers or herdsmen. So that being said, food wasn't a problem. Food wasn't a problem. Uh, the problem back then was people had difficulty preserving food. They had food. They had food. They had fish. They had they had meat. They had poultry. Everything. The problem is they can't preserve food, and that's when salt came in. That's when they discovered the the, the importance and the use of salt. That's why people back then were working to get paid either with things they can barter against salt or with salt directly. And up until now, what we call sueldo, salary, it stems from the word, the Latin word salarium, right? And it just kept on, it just kept on improving. It just kept on evolving. Uh, it was only during the, it was only during the 17th century that we saw the advent of. Uh, Precious metals or precious stones, but not. It was only during the 17th century when people had uh, the appreciation for for gold. 18th century, we saw people starting to organize uh, banks. 18th century, that was the time people started banking. It just kept on evolving. 20, 20, 20th century, we saw people using bills, coins. 20th century, we saw people starting to use non bills or non coins, like non coin transactions. Uh, we started using checks. We started receiving promissory notes. Uh, we started getting access to our money even after banking hours uh, by way of automated tellering machines. Uh, and it just kept on evolving. 21st century, uh, we saw. The advent of internet banking, and uh, right now we're at the cost of uh, the fintech revolution or the financial technology revolution. I I I would like you to appreciate. I would like to pause and appreciate uh, this this uh, uh, this evolution, this ev- this slide about evolution, because I'd like you to appreciate how far we've come. From the humble Jurassic beginnings of bartering, from the humble Jurassic beginnings of people getting paid with salt, look at us now. I mean, you guys can start ordering stuff, car batteries, accessories. You can start uh, ordering food. You can have uh, items delivered right in front of your doorstep, even without. Having to go out of your, uh, even without having to go out of your office, your your, your, your home. We're doing this because. Uh, hold on, hold on. Everything, everything good from your end. I mean, as far as audio is concerned, because it's really raining pretty hard from my side of the metro. Everything good from your end. Okay. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So again, moving along. Uh, this is something uh, I, I'd like you guys to appreciate. Uh, the the evolution of money, the evolution of banking. Uh, it's it's banks, financial institutions. They're actually making it easy for us to transact. They're actually trying to make it easy for us to to save. They're actually trying to make it easy for us to invest. But uh, the problem is. Whether you admit it or not, whether you understand it or not, uh, we are not being able to uh, take advantage. That's the problem. We're not being able to take advantage of the technological advancement being offered by banks, by financial institutions. Because the reason why I'm very confident in saying that is because 75% of Filipinos, that means three out of four, 75% of Filipinos. Or financially illiterate. We know math. We know how to add. We know how to subtract. We know how to multiply numbers. But the problem is, we don't know how to multiply money. That's what makes us financially illiterate. Another problem is, eighty percent of Filipinos, according to the Asian Development Bank, eighty percent of Filipinos don't have financial plans. Guys, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not 
referring to a formal uh, notarized piece of document. All I'm really uh, referring to is the, a plan between you and yourself as to how you're going to use your money. That's the problem. Again, for the benefit of uh, the students uh, listening to this uh, webinar, I don't care if you're just a student. Eventually, you're going to start earning your own money. And uh, that's the reason why every time I get invited to talk to students, I always make it a point to make you guys realize that as students, I want you to be one step ahead. I want you to think about uh, your life after being student. Your life after me. Uh, this is uh, something very important because as, as even as students right now, you're managing money. You're handling money. Uh, your allowances, your baon, uh, your, your budget for books, your budget for, for uh, tuition, everything. And that alone is uh, a responsibility. That alone is a financial responsibility. And I'd like you guys to take that responsibility seriously. Because by the time you start earning your own money, you're going to have to manage it better. Because that's the fruit of your hard work. That's already the fruit of your labor. Again, it's just sad to know that 8 out of 10 Filipinos don't have a plan. Even before, I mean, for, for working employees, for, for business people, we know for a fact, twice a month, once a month, we're going to receive something. But the problem is, we know we're going to receive something, but we don't know what to do with that money. And again, whether you admit it or not, if we don't know what to do with money, if we don't have a plan when it comes to money, chances are we're going to almost always end up spending everything. Again, because we don't have a plan. It's easier for us to spend money than to keep it, than to, than to save it, than to invest it. Again, that's human nature. Um, that's why for, for us to be able to succeed, that's why for us to be able to win over human nature, we need some sort of uh, relearning. We need some sort of uh, paradigm shift. And that's what I'm going to introduce over the next few minutes. Another thing I'd like you to understand is 90% of Filipinos don't save. And this is according to no less than the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. 9 out of 10 Filipinos don't save. 100% of Filipinos would like to save. But 90, only 90% 90 of us can afford to save. Why? Why? Because we think top 3 reasons we're going to discuss in a little while we think because we can't save, because, because it's, it's, it's hard for us to save, uh, because we're only receiving so much, uh, because prices of goods and commodities out there keep on increasing. And boy, I can't possibly save because uh, I'm only earning a few thousand pesos a month, uh, because I'm paying a lot when it comes to rent, when it comes to groceries, when it comes to pamalenke. And uh, those, are, those are valid, but those aren't excuses. I'm saying, I'm telling you guys, those aren't excuses. And I'm going to prove to you guys that uh, even if you think you don't have enough to save, even if you think you're earning very, very minimal uh, for you to be able to afford to save and invest, I'm going to help you uh, free up some money uh, for you to be able to start saving and investing. If 90% of Filipinos can't afford to save, I don't want you to get surprised, but again, this is a legitimate. Uh, this is a legitimate report. According to the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, as well, ninety-nine percent of Filipinos don't even invest in our very own stock market. Ninety-nine percent of Filipinos aren't even investing in the local stock market, and that's why I'm doing things like this. That's why every year I average about four hundred speaking engagements. That's more than more than the, the uh, number of calendar days in a year. Since joining First Metro Securities 2016, my team were averaging close to 400 speaking engagements, live speaking engagements a year. Practically because of this. Because 99% of Filipinos don't know how, how do we really begin to invest in the stock market. And again, that's, that's part and parcel of, uh, that's, that's, that's largely the reason why I'm doing this. 
that's largely the reason why I am conducting this uh, uh, mini learning uh, program for you guys again. And the 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 sad part there is, according to SSS, ninety seven percent of Filipinos retire poor. Imagine again, a good thing we're we're a mix of students, uh, uh, employees, business people, uh, neighbors. Uh, look at this. 97% of Filipinos retiring poor, according to no less than SSS. Imagine you guys, you and me, we, we've been studying for close to 20, 20 years, uh, some even more uh, post-grad studies. We're going to work for almost 40 years, and by the time we turn 60, time for us to uh, uh, retire, uh, rest, relax. But SSS tells us that Andoy, it's not yet. You can't afford to 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 relax. You can't afford to retire. You can't afford to uh, 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 lay back uh, because you don't have money. That's that's what this uh, figure says. Ninety seven percent of Filipinos retire poor. Studying for twenty years, working for forty years, we're still will still end up being poor. Why? Again, because 90, 75% of Filipinos are financially illiterate, because 80% of Filipinos don't have formal financial plans, because 90% of Filipinos don't save, and because 99% of Filipinos aren't even investing. And those are the things we're going to solve within the next few minutes or so. All right? Now, it's very important for us to look into... Paradigm shift. Sabi ko nga, paradigm shift. I, I'd like to introduce to you guys as, uh, another angle of attack. I'd like to introduce to you guys another, a, a different mindset. Uh, but first off, let, let's admit, let's admit the fact that when it comes to money, when we talk about money, we almost always end up uh, equating, we almost always end up thinking that the sole purpose, the only purpose uh, of money is for us to be able to purchase something. Ang pera, pang, pang, pang bayad lang yan, pang bili lang yan. Ang pera, kailangan kong uh, ipunin, kailangan kong pagtrabawuhan para mabili ko lahat ng gusto ko. Uh, in truth, uh, I mean, I mean uh, partially, yeah, uh, I, I would agree that uh, you, you can't buy something, you, you can't purchase something, you can't achieve something uh, without money. But money is actually more than that. That's what I'm try, trying to drive at. The paradigm shift I'd like to introduce to you guys is that money is that not just intended. Money is not just a means for us to purchase something. Money, if, uh, if managed the right way, money, if uh, saved the right way, money, if invested the right way via the stock market, via uh, legitimate businesses, uh, via via the capital markets, money can make more money. The conversion of money to money producing uh, outlets is uh, you converting your money to becoming an asset. You're trying to convert your money to becoming an asset for it to make more money for you, for you to be able to create another stream of income, for you to make more money eventually. That's uh, that's the conversion, money to asset. And that's what I'd like you to understand. That's what I'd like you to do. I may be from a stock brokerage firm, but as early as now, I'm telling you, the stock market is not the only uh, investment outlet in the Philippines. We're going to talk about a lot of options. The common denominator between those options is for us to make our money's worth be greater than its cost. That's how, how we make money. We make our money's worth, future value, be greater than its cost, acquisition value, present value. You buy something low, you sell something high. That's how we make money. All right. So the 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 the, the paradigm shift uh, I, I I'm, I'm trying to introduce to you guys: converting our money to becoming an asset, uh, for us to make more money, uh, for us to produce money. Uh, for us to make our money's worth be greater than its cost. And next question is, Andoy, how do we do that? What are our options? How do we convert our money to assets? Ladies and gentlemen, 
these are the legitimate outlets in the Philippines. They're arranged in that fashion uh, because of their risk, return, and time horizon features. Um, again, from from I, I, I'm seeing a couple of uh, um, Econ classmates uh, in, in attendance. This is essentially what uh, Ma'am Rulina Viloria, uh, Econ 101, has been uh, teaching us about uh, the higher the risk, the higher the return. Uh, deposits, bonds, stocks, real estate, the, the higher you go, the higher the income potential. And that's attractive. Of course, human nature. And wait, uh, when it comes to investments, I'd like, I'd like to put my money in, in vehicles uh, with uh, the highest returns. Again, the higher you go, uh, the higher it can pay you back. But the problem is, it goes hand in hand with risk. You can't, you can't have, you can't invest in an investment vehicle. You can put your money in an investment vehicle with a very high potential, high income potential, with a very low risk. If in case you get introduced, if in case you get offered an investment opportunity, and uh, invest ka dito pare, uh, walang, walang talo. Walang talo. Bigay mo lang sa akin yung pera mo. And then, uh, ako bahala, after one week, bibigyan kita ng doble. Bigyan mo ko 5,000 ngayon. Next Wednesday, I'm going to give you 10,000 pesos. If if you get, if you come across something like that, if you if you get offered something like that, very, very high returns. May promise pa. Lalo na yung may promise. Lalo na yung may guarantee. And then, very, very low risk of losing your money. That's actually the time you have to think twice. That's the problem with Filipinos. Eh? The problem with Filipinos is when it comes to making money, they, they, we, we, I'm going to include myself. Human nature, we'd like easy money, fast money. Kung saan mas mabilis kumita ng pera, dun ako pupunta. But the thing is, for us to be able to do this, for us to be able to uh, master our money, we have to do two things. Eh? Before we actually start earning, we have to start learning. You can't earn without the learn process, without, without, by, by skipping the learn part. And this is learn. What we're doing right now, ito yung learn portion. Eh. Um, if you would notice, it's taking me quite uh, a while, a number of, it's taking me quite a while to introduce uh, uh, these concepts to you. Because personally, I think this is very important. Personally, I think uh, before we even think about saving, before we even think about investing, I, I need to introduce these things to you uh, for, for, for you to be able to appreciate what your options are. And uh, just so it, when the time comes, we start talking about the more complicated stuff, you know what we're talking about. Because and na yung, ano, and dito na yung, and dito na yung foundation. You, you already have a deep, uh, sense of understanding, you already have a, a deep uh, appreciation of what we're going to talk about eventually. So again, deposits, bonds, stocks, real estate. The higher the risk, the higher the return, the lower the risk, the lower the return. How about time horizon? Time horizon is uh, the length of time you, as investors, uh, would need to let go of your money for it to become an asset. So again, that's the conversion. Uh, when it comes to time horizon, it varies from person to person. Some some investors can only afford to let go of their money for a short amount of time, so short term, while some investors can afford to let go of their money for a longer uh, period of time. And uh, ideally, when it comes to time horizon, similar with uh, risk and return. If with risk and return, the lower the risk, the lower the return, the higher the risk, the higher the return. With time horizon, the longer amount of time you let go your of your money for it to become an asset, for it to work for you, for it to make more money, the higher it should pay you back. So again, let, let's recap before we go uh, one character, one item at a time, one asset class at a time. When it comes to risk, return, and time horizon, the reason why these asset classes are arranged in that fashion is because of their risk, return, and time horizon features. The lower the risk, the lower the, the return, Risk is uh, the probability of you losing money. Return is the probability of you making money. The higher the risk, the higher the return. When it comes to time horizon, the shorter amount of time you're letting go of your money, 
the the, the least uh, uh, the, the the lower the returns potential, the higher the longer amount of time you let go of your money to be, for it to become an asset, the higher it should pay you back. Now, let's uh, talk about the first character on the list, which is deposits. Deposits practically provide you with a short-term uh, option. Uh, I'm recommending that you just place your money here for a short amount of time. When we say short term, less than one year, uh, because it's earning very, very low. It's it's giving you very minimal uh, income. Uh, for for starters, just so uh, we, we put a peso value into it, uh, a regular deposit account is just giving us back 0.25%. Uh, 0.25% is like... Uh, 2500 pesos for a 1 million peso placement for one year so it's that cheap it's that 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 low but i'm not discouraging you from saving um uh, in fact if, if i'm going to discourage you from saving sana hindi na hindi ko na inintroduce sana hindi hindi na lang ako nagsalita about uh, investing no? uh but uh, the reason why we're doing this is because i i'm introducing i'm introducing these characters to you for for you to have uh, options for you to have uh uh uh, for you to be able to make informed decisions eventually as to where you're going to place your money. Um, how do you make uh, your money grow by way of, uh, by way of uh, deposits? You have uh, interest earnings. You know? uh, when it comes to interest earnings, um, uh, it, it's, it's uh, again, very minimal. You're just looking at 0.25%. Uh, um, uh, but 0.25% uh, is better than nothing. All right. So, for example, um, the reason why I uh, another thing I'd like you to understand is the reason why I'm uh, calling deposits as uh, uh, a low risk uh, instrument is because uh, number one of the PBIC coverage. Um, uh, it's 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 uh, guaranteed by the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation for the first five hundred thousand pesos. So regardless. Of uh, the number of accounts you retain, halimbawa, uh, ako, I have uh, ten accounts, for example, with uh, with uh, Metro Bank, um, uh, and uh, all those accounts have uh, one hundred thousand pesos, so that's one million pesos. Uh, just in case, again, uh, for 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 the purposes of this conversation, uh, let's say Metro Bank uh, uh, closes shop. Uh, so by tomorrow, if Metro Bank closes shop, by tomorrow, PDIC will take off, uh, will uh, will uh, step in. And it's going to, it's going to communicate. It's going to, it's going to uh, uh, get in touch with. Uh, it's going to get in touch with uh, Metro Bank depositors. So let's say, makakuha ko ng, uh, ng, uh, ng message, ng email uh, from from Metro Bank saying, "Andoy, uh, being a Metro Bank depositor, uh, you you can uh, you can claim your uh, you can you can claim your funds uh, from uh, a certain branch, for example." So I go to Metro Bank. Uh, I provide them with proof that I have 10 accounts with Metro Bank. But P the PDIC representative will tell me, and I uh, understand you have 10 accounts with Metro Bank totaling to a million pesos. But uh, unfortunately, I can only give you 500,000 pesos because that's the maximum coverage of the Philippine Deposits Insurance Corporation. Um, what happens uh, next? What happens next is uh, my remaining 500,000 pesos, hindi naman siya automatically wala na. That remaining 500,000 pesos will... Uh, uh, will depend uh, on uh, uh, the ability of PDIC to sell Metro Bank's uh, assets. Uh, kung sakaling mabilin, mabenta nila yung assets, um, armored cars, branches, uh, furniture, fixture, uh, bank cars, vehicles, uh, everything, every asset. No, If they're able to sell those assets for uh, whatever their worth is, 100% of their book value, for example, market value, then uh, uh, it's possible for me to get 100% uh, of my 500,000 pesos back. But if not, uh, then I probably, uh, I probably won't be able to receive the entire amount. Baka pwedeng portion lang, uh, half of it, 10% of it. It really depends. No? So what I, really, what, what I normally uh, recommend uh, to, to clients, what I normally recommend to friends, and what I am personally doing, I am splitting my uh, deposit uh, uh, deposit exposure to several banks. 
just in case. Again, I, I uh, you're you're talking about the biggest banks in the Philippines, the BPIs, the BBOs, the Metro banks. But just to, just just the same, just the same. It 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 wouldn't hurt if if you are prepared. So what uh, what I can recommend is if you need to maintain more than five hundred thousand pesos in deposits, then split that amount into several banks. If you need to maintain, for example, one million pesos in deposits, you might want to split it uh, in uh, equally among three banks. So, so for example, three hundred thirty-three thousand with BPI, three hundred thirty-three with BDO, three hundred thirty-three with uh, Metro Bank. Um, but ano ba- bakit ganun? Uh, hindi ba pwedeng dalawa na lang? 500,000 pesos, bank 1, bank 2. Pwede naman. But the problem is, if you max out 500,000 pesos, you're practically not giving your deposit uh, deposit uh, exposure room to grow. Uh, ibig sabihin nun, if uh, you have 500,000 pesos, bank 1, bank 2, and then all of a sudden, both banks uh, 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 fold, ang makukuha mo lang is 500,000 pesos. Hindi mo makukuha yung interest earning. So sayang din. So that that's uh, again the value of having a plan. That's the value of knowing what your options are, and uh, again, that's the reason why I'm I'm sharing that that with you. Okay, so that's uh, how deposits uh, uh, go. That's how deposits uh, uh, perform. Um, uh, of course, not all people uh, uh, approaching the bank would like to deposit. Hindi lahat ng pera, hindi lahat ng tao na pumupunta sa banko nagde-deposito. May mga tao na pumupunta sa banko dahil gusto nilang mangutang. Uh, and uh, the, this is the, the cycle. This is the the, uh, uh, the the cycle when it comes to uh, banks. No? Uh, the problem is, when it comes to depositing, we're only receiving so much. Napag-usapan natin kanina, 0.25%. So, ibig sabihin, again, let me just, uh, for, for your appreciation, for every 1 million pesos uh, that you deposit, for one year, you're going to get before taxes just 2,500 pesos. One million, one year, 2,500 pesos. And that's, that's super low. That's super low. But what if you borrow one million pesos? Antoy, wala akong pera pang deposit. What I'm going to do, I'm going to borrow money. For every one million pesos you uh, borrow from the bank, on the average, because banks are charging about 6% for a multi-purpose or personal loan, for every 1 million pesos you uh, you borrow from the bank, you're going to have to pay them an extra about 17, 18, 19,000 pesos. You see the difference? 17, 18, 19,000 pesos if you're borrowing money. 2,500 if you're trying to grow your money. That's the cost of money. When it, when it comes to when it comes to borrowing money, that's the cost of money. Your interest charges. When it comes to depositing money, growing money, that's the cost of money, represented by interest earnings. Uh, but then again, let me just be very clear. I'm not discouraging you from this uh, saving. All I'm really saying is that's the reason why deposits are there. That's the reason why deposits are low risk, low return. And that's also the reason why I'd like you to keep your time horizon in deposits short term. All right. Next item on our list is bonds. Atong bonds, uh, utang to. Uh, it's 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 a uh, it's a form of uh, indebtedness, uh, a certificate of indebtedness, by uh, issued by corporate entities, uh, corporate bonds, or the government, uh, government bonds, so retail treasury bonds. Uh, our money uh, with uh, with deposits, our money makes more money by way of interest. With bonds, our money makes more money two ways. One, by way of capital appreciation. It just appreciates as an asset class. And another, by way of coupon payments. Uh, when it comes to investing in bonds, uh, the reason why I, I chose to show bonds uh, uh, with, 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 this, uh, uh, with this photo, with this image, is because right now, as we speak, wala nang itsura ang bonds because electronic na ang bonds. Eh. Lahat, lahat electronic, lahat online. Uh, back in the day, this is what you're going to get if you, if you lend money to a corporate entity or to the government. This is practically the bond. This is the bond. Let me hover over it. This is the bond. 
this portion right here, yung nasa baba niya, these are what we call coupons. So literal na coupon siya. Uh, anong anong sense niyan? Day one, for example, uh, mag invest ka sa bonds, you're going to give your, back in the day for you to be able to invest in bonds, 500,000 pesos minimum. So day one, you go to treasury, the treasury office, you give your uh, 500,000 pesos in cash uh, to, to the teller, and then you get this, everything. For example, you invested in a 10-year bond, and that 10-year bond gives out uh, quarterly payments, qu quarterly coupons. So that means every year, you're going to have to file a vacation leave at least four times a year for you to be able to go physically from your house to the treasury office just for you to be able to bring to, to just for you to be able to give that coupon to the cashier and then the cashier pays you your uh, coupon payment so for example for purposes of this uh, 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 conversation 500,000 pesos 10% 10 years so that means every year you're going to get 50,000 pesos 50,000 pesos divided by 4 because it's paying out every quarter four times so that means you're going to get 12,500 pesos every quarter. So mag VL ka, uh, absent ka sa school, 12,500, 12,500. You're going to do that over the next 10 years. You're going to do that over the next 40 quarters. What happens next? Natapos ang lahat, meron kang 50,000 pesos kada, kada taon. So that means 50,000 multiplied by 10, 500,000 pesos. So again, let's recap. Day one, magkano yung binitawan mo? Magkano yung ipinautang mo sa, sa treasury office? 500,000 pesos. After 10 years, after 40 quarters, after 40 vacation leaves, you get 500,000 pesos. Are you happy with that? Remember, remember, for us to make money, our money's worth should be greater than its cost. Our cost is 500,000 pesos. After 10 years, after 40 VLs, after 40 times of visiting the treasury office just for you to give that coupon, you're going to get 500,000 pesos back. Are you happy with that? Of course not. Because your money's worth is just equal to its cost. You're not making money yet. But remember, what you've been, what you've been surrendering to the treasury office are just the coupons. Coupons pa lang yung binabalik mo. May naiiwan ka pang bond. So that means malapit ng mag-mature yung bond mo. Because uh, unlike deposits na meron lang siyang, uh, na, na, practically wala siyang maturity. Time deposits, meron siyang maturity pero you can just roll it over this one. Wala, may maturity siya. Ang ibig sabihin nun, pag naubos na lahat ng coupons mo, you still have your bonds with you. What happens next? Again, malapit ng mag-mature yung bond. The, the, the time, uh, when, when, when that, that time comes, na maturity na ng bond, this is what you're going to give the treasury office back. Itong buong bond na yan. So you're going, to, you're going to surrender that entire piece of paper to the treasury office. And what you're going to get in return is your 500,000 pesos back. I think now you should be happy. 500,000 pesos, your cost, day one. After 10 years, after 40 quarters, after 40 vacation leaves, you get 500,000 pesos. Yun yung kinita mo. And then after another three months, it's time for your bond to mature. You, you, you surrender your, uh, your piece of paper, that certificate, and then you get another 500,000 pesos. You get your principal back. You get your money back. So in total, you get 1 million pesos worth versus 500,000 pesos cost. Let's recap. Let's recap. When, we, when I was just trying to introduce to you guys uh, the, the legitimate asset classes, I, I was talking about risk, return, time horizon. Again, you're talking about the longer amount of time you let go of your money, the higher it should pay you back. And again, again right now, when it comes to bonds, it's evident. Uh, the longer amount of time you let go of your money for it to work for you, for it to uh, convert itself to become an asset, for it to make more money, the the the, the higher it should pay you back. All right. So that's how bonds operate. That's how bonds work. All right. Next, talk about stocks. We're going to talk a lot about stocks, especially during the second part of the program. But now, as an asset class, for intro, 
uh, stocks are pretty much uh, part ownership or co-ownership in a listed corporation, publicly listed corporation. When we say publicly listed corporation, you don't have to uh, you don't have to request, you don't have to file or uh, ask for permission for you to be able to buy, for example, Meralco shares, uh, SM shares, Pure Gold shares. You don't need to apply, you don't need to line up uh, for you to be able to do that. It's pu- available to the public. It's publicly available. If in, in deposits, your money makes more money by way of interest. If in bonds, your money makes more money by way of uh, capital appreciation and uh, coupon payments. When it comes to equities, when it comes to stocks, it also earns two ways. Especially if you are investing in the right kind of stock. If in, in, in a very profitable stock, in a very, very profitable company. Your money makes more money by way of capital appreciation. You buy one stock low and then you sell that stock high. You make money. And at the same time, dividends. Dividends is uh, simply, simply, uh, simply put, profit sharing. It's your share of the profits of that particular company. Why are you eligible to get shares of the profit of the company? Again, because you are a co-owner, because you're a part owner of that company. Uh, The good thing about stocks, it has no maturity. For as long as the company is operating, for as long as the company is listed in the Philippine Stock Exchange, then you may continue investing, you may continue holding on to your uh, uh uh, portfolio to, to, to your to your stocks and uh, if uh, with deposits I'm encouraging you to just keep it keep it there short term because of its low earnings potential in bonds I can you, you can you can invest money medium to long term five to ten years perhaps because of its coupon payments with stocks I am encouraging you guys to keep a long term stance I'm encouraging you to have a very uh, long in in in, in in investment horizon, a very long time horizon, at the minimum ten years. Uh, this is actually very beneficial, especially for the young, the younger investors, students, uh, our students in attendance, uh, because you have uh, the gift of time, you have uh, uh, the advantage of time. You can uh, you can afford uh, to start investing in small amounts, even during the pandemic, even during the lockdown. Uh, you won't be able to feel it, perhaps, because again, you're just investing small, small amounts, and uh, you're you're investing with time as your ally. Again, I, I don't want to talk geek, I don't want to talk technicals, but let's review the 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 formula for interest. It's I equals uh, uh, what do you call this? Interest is equal to principal times rate times time, PRT. Principal, no matter how, how small your principal is, uh, no matter how small the, the rate of return is, for as long as mahaba or malaki yung time, yung time component, matagal kang nag invest 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, it's going to make uh, do you wonders. So that's essentially the reason behind uh, uh, my recommendation of uh, putting your money, placing your money, investing long-term in equities. All right? How do we make money from stocks? We provide liquidity uh, to uh, these corporate entities. They use that liquidity. They use our money for projects, for expansion, to market new products and services, uh, to hire endorsers uh, for, for, for them to boost their sales. And when they generate profits, it gets passed back on to us as investors by way of capital gains and dividends. All right? Of course, uh, to wrap it up, I'd also like to let you know that apart from deposits or what we call money market, apart from bonds or what we call the bond market, and apart from equities or what we call the stock market, meron din tayong real estate or properties market. It's there. It's way up there because uh, it's uh, relatively giving us higher returns. Why am I sure? Why am I so sure that it's going to give us higher returns? Remember, Padami ng padami ang tao sa mundo. Padami ng padami ang tao sa Pilipinas. If you're going to ask people, your friends, even yourselves, uh, th- there's always this 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 goal in mind uh, that andoy uh, for if 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 I if I make a lot of money in investing, if I get to save a lot, I'm going to start 
uh, investing in real estate. I'm going to buy myself a condo unit. I'm going to buy myself um, a house and lot. I'm going to buy myself a rest house. Um, dak parte na sa 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 buhay, parte na sa uh, sa atin, sa kultura natin ang uh, maisama ang real estate property sa life goals, no. And that's essentially the reason why uh, it's 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 increasing in value. Padami ng padami ang demand. Pataas ng pataas ang demand kasi maraming mara, mara, parami ng parami ang, ng tao ang gustong magkaroon ng bahay at lupa, ng condo units. Pero yung supply natin ng bahay at lupa, ng bakanteng lote, yung supply natin ng condo units, hindi, hindi ganun karami. So again, let's talk about economics, law of supply and demand. Pag kumukonte ang supply, tumataas ang presyo. And that's essentially it. But the problem is because... Sabi nga natin, high risk, high return. Ano naman ang risk dito? Mataas ang risk, uh, mataas ang returns potential but mataas din ang risk potential because of liquidity. Again, it's very difficult for us to easily liquidate real estate property. Um, no matter how many followers you have on Instagram, no matter how many friends you have on Facebook, uh, no matter if every five minutes you keep on posting on Facebook Marketplace, house and lot for sale, condo unit for sale, it's not going to be very easy for us to, to, to sell a property. Because again, when it comes to uh, doing those things, mad, mad, madalas life goal yun eh. Uh, once in a lifetime, it's a life milestone. So it's again, very difficult for, for, for us to do that. Um, uh, that's why I, I'm encouraging you guys to come up with uh, a, a very organized, a, a, a very uh, uh, a, a plan when it comes to diversifying your portfolio. I don't want you guys to spend way, way, way too much uh, on, on real estate uh, because it's very difficult for us to, to liquidate, especially when the time comes that you need money. Uh, so the, the, the idea is for us to uh, maintain a good mix of everything. All right. So before we go there, let me just run you through uh, a summary of what we've just talked about, the legitimate investment classes in the Philippines. Um, paano ko nasabi na legitimate sila? They're legitimate because, uh, number one, meron silang central pricing figure. Wala kang masasabi na, ah, uh, ang, ang presyo niyan, ganito lang. Uh, especially when it comes to money market, bond market, and stock market. Mer- meron siyang central pricing figure. Uh, it's legitimate because it's regulated by uh, uh, the government. Uh, meron siyang uh, regulator sa deposits, it's Banko Central. Sa bonds, it's Securities Exchange Commission. Sa stocks, it's uh, Securities Exchange Commission in the Philippine Stock Exchange. And sa properties, there's BIR, there's HLURB, there's National Housing Authority. So maraming, maraming regulators just in case merong mga reklamo yung investors. Merong makikinig sa kanila sa mga reklamo nila. So again, in summary, uh, when it comes to deposits, low risk, low return, uh, our money makes more money by way of uh, interest, uh, and uh, the ideal time horizon, short term. Let's keep our money there short term because our money is not uh, uh, earning uh, qu- quite a lot. When it comes to bonds, medium risk, medium return, our money makes more money by way of capital appreciation and coupons. Uh, the ideal time horizon medium term, 5 to 10 years perhaps, or 1 uh, one to 5, 5 to 10 years. Because again, we'd like to take advantage of coupon payments. When it comes to stocks or equities, high risk and high return, capital appreciation and dividends are the main growth drivers, uh, our money making more money. And uh, when it comes to time horizon, you can afford to invest in equities in stocks long term, minimum 10 years for you to be able to take advantage of this. And... Lastly, real estate or the properties market, higher risk, higher return because of liquidity issues. But when it comes to growth drivers, you, your money makes more money by way of capital appreciation, um, land value appreciation. Uh, from time to time, depends on how you use your property. Pwedeng may ipasok tayo dito na rental fees, uh, rental income, or lease income. So again, it really depends on uh, the use of, uh, of uh, the real estate. And again, when it comes to time horizon, it's still ideal for you to keep a long-term stance. All right. So we've practically spent the first hour of this program talking about the evolution of money, the evolution of banking, and the legitimate investment classes in the Philippines. Hindi tayo mabagal. 
it's really intended to uh, 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 the, the pace is really intended that way because again I'd like you to understand what your options are at ayoko ng mas scam kayo ayoko mabiktima kayo ng scam dahil hindi nyo alam kung ano yung pinapasukan yun so ngayon uh, importante to because you guys can can now influence your friends you you guys can now influence your family members to think about uh, uh, their investment options especially if they get approached by people claiming that they're in investment professionals that they're investment experts kasi ngayon alam niyo na pwede niyo nang maituro sa kanila na ito pala kaya pala ganito kaya pala mababa ang deposits kaya pala okay lang yung bonds kaya pala attractive ang stock market kaya pala okay din mag-invest sa uh, sa properties because alam na natin na, nahimay na natin na breakdown na natin yung uh, yung characteristics nila, yung yung features and yung benefits nila one item at a time, and uh, we're just getting started, all right? Now, ideally, ideally, um, ang portfolio natin, ang investment portfolio natin, should have all of them. Again, I am from a stock brokerage firm. Uh, my friends know about this. Uh, that the more people investing in stocks, the the, the higher I get paid. Uh, mas 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 maganda yung performance bonus ko, mas maganda yung profit sharing ko. But here I am telling you uh, on live stream, re- being recorded. Here I am telling you that uh, the the stock market is not the only investment outlet. If I'd like you to invest all your money in stocks, sana hindi ko na kayo hindi ko na introduce yung deposits. Sana hindi ko na introduce yung bonds. Sana hindi ko na sinabi na ah, better returns kasi sa real estate. Again, I'm doing this not to make money. I'm doing this not to uh, uh, increase my 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 uh, for my brand. I'm doing this because I'd like you to understand what your options are. Again, the ideal portfolio, your, the ideal portfolio should, should be composed of everything you're seeing in front of you. Tapat meron kang liquidity in deposits. Tapat meron kang stability from bonds. Uh, that's why we call it fixed income instruments, bonds. Tapat meron kang uh, growth from stocks uh, because you're already owning businesses and uh, yung pera na nakukuha mo by way of uh, interest sa deposits uh, by way of uh, appreciation sa bonds uh, coupon sa bonds appreciation sa stocks uh, dividends sa stocks yun yung unti-unti nating iniipon at pinapa pinapagulong pinapaikot pinapalaki pa lalo for us to be able to eventually uh, buy ourselves our real estate property all right so uh, that's that's uh, how we diversify that's how we build uh, a, a very solid uh, crisis proof portfolio all right now what are the top three reasons why filipinos aren't investing what, what are the top three reasons why filipinos aren't saving lack of discipline and lack of knowledge number two and number three masasagot natin yan. again because we're trying to learn i'm trying to share everything i know so when it comes to lack of knowledge, lack of discipline, madaling masolve yan because of learning. But the other thing is, Filipinos can't save, Filipinos can't invest because we lack capital. Wala tayong pera. Antoy, how, how, I, I, I totally get you. Ang, ang ganda ng presentation, ang dami kong natutunan. But no matter how I try, wala akong pera. Wala akong pera for me to see, wala akong pera for me to invest. So, lack of capital. And that's something we uh, can address by way of budgeting. How can you save and how can you invest if you don't have money? That's where budgeting comes in. I want you to start mastering your money by multiplying it instead of being enslaved by money, by just keep on, by just working for it. It's very important uh, for us to uh, look into uh, it's very important for us to look into the, the 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 value of approaching something, approaching a goal, approaching uh, approaching uh, uh, an, uh, a dream, approaching a task with with discipline, with uh, with an organized thought, uh, with research, of course. So, gusto natin ma- ma- achieve yung goal natin by by way of. Uh, 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 checking our options, ano ba yung, ano ba yung tamang paraan, uh, ano ba yung importanteng pag, pagdaanan natin before before we, we do this. So when it comes to growing our money, 
hindi muna natin pag-uusapan ng saving at investing. Let's start talking about budgeting for us to be able to free up money, free up liquidity uh, for, for, us to, uh, for us to make more money, for us to be able to start saving and investing. This is the default uh, money flow of Filipinos. Whether you admit it or not, at some point in your life, siguro, malamang ganito yung naging situation natin, that whatever we get, we spend. Kung ano yung income natin, madalas yun yung expense natin. At kung ganun ang nangyayari, wala na, tayong iba, wala na tayong perang matitira for us to be able to save and invest. You get the point? Kung ano yung pumapasok na, na, na pera sa atin, madalas, malamang sa malamang, na nagagastos natin dahil konti lang yung pumapasok na pera, at dahil malaki ang ginagastos natin, kaya wala nang natitira for saving and investing. And again, I get your point. That's the reason why, yun ang top three reasons natin why, we're, uh, why we are uh, uh, having a difficult time saving and investing. Now, hold on. There you go. Now, let me now introduce to you the, this 50-30-20 uh, strategy. Um, hindi pa siguro masyadong makaka-relate dito yung yung mga students natin uh, in attendance because uh, uh, hindi pa kayo kumikita ng sarili yung pera but it's very important that you guys get exposed to this uh, strategy as early as now para hindi niyo pa hindi niyo pa kinikita yung pera niyo alam niyo na how to behave towards money for the benefit of those uh, uh, already working uh, this is something i'd like you to uh, uh, practice no hold on all right so this 50 30 20 strategy uh goes like this what i'd like you to go, do is every time you receive something hold on Every time you receive something, get paid uh, once or twice a month, uh, get paid every 15 days. Every single time you receive something, a lot, budget, uh, set aside 50% for regular living expenses for your day-to-day. 50%, automatically 50%. Because again, uh, the, the, the idea is for us to survive. Sort of to survive. To survive the day, to survive the week, to survive a crisis. So 50% automatically you devote that to regular living expenses. No no uh, uh, no ifs or, or and, and buts no no negotiations 50% regular living expenses. And then the remaining 20% that's something you're going to have to set aside for leisure. I, I don't want you guys to take life super seriously. Uh, so I, I I'd also like you to enjoy it like you to uh, uh, budget money for, for stress relieving uh, activities, for shopping, for dining out, for, for movies, uh, for movie and music subscriptions, and uh, for you to be able to fund your hobbies. No, 20% should do. 50% regular living expenses, 20% leisure, 30% for future proofing, for crisis proofing. I want you to have an emergency fund. <laughs> Hold on. I want you to have an emergency fund worth 6 to 12 months of uh, uh, your monthly expenses. And then after that, I'd like you to have a growth fund. And after that, I'd like you to start working on uh, getting, your, uh, get, getting your goals for, for your real estate property and eventually for your retirement. These are things that we're going to start, uh, we're going to talk about in, in granular detail as we go along. But at least my goal for now is to introduce to you guys the 50 30 20 strategy. This is going to be, this is going to be very crucial and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be easier said than done. Uh, I perfectly understand, and though it's easier said than done, and daling sabihin na pakahirap kawin. But uh, my contention there is, even if it's easier said than done, it can still be done. Uh, if, if, if you don't, force yourself to do it, no one will. If you don't force yourself to budget money for saving and investing, no one will. If you don't force yourself to save 30%, if you don't force yourself to invest 30% every payday, don't expect somebody to do that for you. All right. Uh, I mean, again, when you talk about crisis proofing, when you talk about survival, 
it's every man for himself. So if 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 you you can't outsource this. You can you can you can outsource this. Uh, pare, pwede bang ikaw mag-save para sa akin ngayon? Pwede bang ikaw mag-invest sa akin by the time I turn 40? Pwede bang ikaw mag 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 magpalago ng pwede bang ikaw mag mag ipon ng pera para sa akin such that by the time I retire meron akong pera. You, you can't expect people to do that for you. You're going to have to do that yourself. All right? So, I'm going to introduce to you guys this uh worksheet that I prepared. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I can, I can give uh, a copy of this uh, worksheet to you guys for free. Um, uh, I'm just going to have to pull. I'm just going to have to share this, so that uh, there you go. There you go. So this is my. There you go. So this is my budget and spending plan. It's super easy and it's for, uh, formulated, sha. Um, what it does is it actually gives you an idea as to how much you are getting input or income. How much am I getting every first payday of the month versus how am I getting every second payday of the month? Okay, so let's let's break it down one one field at a time, and then uh, you're going to have to plug in the deductions. Magkano ba yung binabawas sa akin ng gobyerno first payday of the month? Magkano yung binagbawa sa akin ng, ng tax first period of the month sa SSS, sa PhilHealth, sa pag-ibig. And then again, it's going to compute those deductions for you. If you're going to notice, uh, this top, por- uh, top portion, uh, I'm going to highlight, hindi siya kasama sa distribution. Because what we're going to include is your net income. Because this is your gross income before taxes. Net income, dito na, dito na ngayon papasok yung distribution natin ng 50-30-20 rule. Alright? So, automatically, ideally, meron ka dapat 50% na naka-devote for regular living expenses. expenses. And in this case, meron siyang 54. So, medyo sobra pa. Uh, mas sobra siya sa budget uh, when it comes to expenses. But again, that, that's okay because it's for survival. Uh, the good thing about this is, uh, this uh, this person, this individual, uh, devotes 34% for uh, investments. And again, pasok siya dun sa 50-30-20 rule. Mababa yung surplus niya na intended for uh, leisure, para sa enjoyment, para sa movies, para sa hobbies, uh, because ideally it should be 20%. But this guy is only saving 11% or uh, may natitira lang siya 11% for, for leisure. But then again, it's something that you guys can work on. Can work on no? Uh, yun ang kagandahan nito. Eh. Nakikita mo kung saan ka sumusobra at saan ka nagkukulang uh, relative to the 50-30-20 rule. That's the budget plan. Let's now go to the spending plan. This spending plan is actually very easy then to, to, to understand. And it's related to uh, your budget plan. Sabi nga natin, this guy is receiving 25,000 pesos uh, a month. But that's the gross income. Ang um, kailangan nating ipasok diyan is the net income. So 23 3 4 6 63. 23 3 4 6 63. 3 4 6 dot 63. That's this person, sorry. 23 3 4 6 there, that's uh, this person's uh, uh, main income. Again, in, in your case, the reason why I am uh, uh, including these uh, uh, items uh, sa, sa worksheet is because you might not uh, be able to realize na meron ka pa palang talagang ibang income. Hindi mo lang, hindi mo lang alam. Hindi mo lang nare-recognize. Hindi mo lang nare-realize. So, it's, it's also very helpful that meron kang ganito for you to be able to, to check uh, baka nga meron naman talaga. For example, meron ka sideline. Meron kang uh, maliit na e-loading business sa bahay. And it's giving you about uh, 1,500 pesos a month. Plug that in. Passive income, investments. For example, uh, meron kang uh, uh, bond investments. At uh, your bond investments is giving you about uh, 1,200 pesos in coupons every month. Plug that in. Uh, rental income on properties. For example, meron kang uh, meron kang uh, uh, dalawang kwarto na pinaparentahan and it's giving you about uh, 8,000 pesos uh, every month. Plug that in. 
those are the these the, the important thing about this is it makes you realize na ah bukod nga pala sa sweldo meron pa ring ibang pumapasok na pera sa akin. Ah uh, importante to para maging formal tayo when it comes to our money management uh, uh, responsibility. Sabi ko nga my my goal is uh, not to make you experts when it comes to investing but my goal is to make you better money managers, all right? Um, uh, and then let's leave this allowance from family members, relatives. Uh, sabihin natin na uh, uh, wala at uh, wala ka pa ring pension because bata ka pa. So instead of just uh, uh, 23,000 a month, nalaman mo na ah, I'm actually receiving 34,000 pesos a month lalo na kung titingnan ko yung iba-ibang uh, sources of income ko, no? So that's the value of uh, putting everything in writing. So that's your main, uh, that's your monthly net income. 2A is your fixed expenses. I already plugged this in ahead of time uh, para makita nyo that it's consistent with what we've written in the budget plan. Sa budget plan, sabi doon, every month, uh, this guy is uh, spending 5000 on rent, 1500 on utilities, 4,000 or 2,000 every payday on uh, uh, life insurance, 4,000 a month or 2,000 per payday on savings and investments, which brings a total of 14,500 pesos every month in fixed expenses, total fixed expenses. Kahit anong mangyari, sabi nitong taong to, every month I'm going to spend this, 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 this on these items, fixed. To be are your controllable expenses. Kasi paiba-iba yan eh. Pwedeng, pa, pwedeng tumaas, pwedeng bumaba, depende sa budget, depende sa presyo ng bilihin, uh, depende kung may matatag, matatimingan ka na sale. But again, I plugged in uh, entries from the budget plan. This person is spending 5,000 on food and uh, 600 pesos every payday or 1,200 a month on transportation. So, total of 6,200 on controllable expenses. Pwedeng tumaas, pwedeng bumaba. Pwedeng magtipid. Imbis na, uh, imbis na mamasahe ka, mag-commute mag, mag, mag ka, pwedeng mag-bike ka. Especially during this uh, ECQ, no? uh, na very limited yung public transportation. So, pwedeng pag nag-bike ka na lang, uh, at may, may existing bike ka na, instead of you spending about 1,200 on transport, that's practically zero. So, 5,000 na lang yung uh, controllable expenses mo. Um, and then, number two is your periodic expenses. When you see periodic expenses, lalo, mas makaka-relate dito yung mga uh, uh, nagtatrabaho na, yung mga merong, uh, yung mga homeowners. Kasi from time to time, mga car owners, uh, from time to time, may mga biglaan at uh, once a year ka lang na gastos. Homeowners, uh, meron, meron tayong tinatawag na a milliard or real estate tax. Usually, nasa front end of uh, the year yan. For example, for a property, let's say, 13,000 pesos, uh, babayaran mo ng February. Um, for car owners, meron tayong at least once a year na uh, tune-up, regular tune-up, change oil. Um, usually, it ranges between 6,000 to 8,000 pesos depending on the type of vehicle. So, usually, sabihin natin April, sasabay mo, for example, sa registro ng sasakyan mo. So, 8,000 kasama ni registro ng sasakyan. And then, uh, for uh, for parents, uh, August, sabi ng Department of Education, regardless if it's going to be physical classes or online classes, classes will resume August 24. And of course, when it comes to classes, may enrollment yan, may tuition fee. For example, you're spending about 40,000 pesos every year on enrollment. This means, when it comes to once a year periodic expenses, meron ka daw kailangang paghahandaan na 61,000 pesos. And 61,000 pesos is a lot. Mabubulaga ka February 13,000. Ang laki nun. Mabubulaga ka April 8,000. Medyo malaki yun. Mas mabubulaga ka August 40,000. What I'm trying to uh, propose is for you to be able to break it down one month at a time, one payday at a time, or better, one day at a time. Instead of you looking at 61,000 pesos, I want you to prepare for it every month. 61,000 pesos divided by 12, 12 months, that just means you need to prepare or shell out or set aside 5,083 pesos every month. Para next year, pag magbabayad ka ng amilyar, next year pag magpapachange oil ka, next year pag magbabayad ka ng tuition, handa ka na. 
and you are preparing for it one month at a time, 5,000 pesos. Kung nalalakihan ka sa 5,000 pesos, the next entry could be more affordable. Instead of you shelling out 5,000 pesos a month, I'm just going to have to ask you to shell out or save 2,542 every payday. Hindi mo na month end gagawin. Every sweldo, mag-set aside ka 2-5 para next year hindi ka mabubulaga sa periodic expenses mo. Kung lalakihan ka pa rin dyan, let's try to do it every day. 52 weeks divided by uh, 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 by 5 days. Uh, sorry, 52 weeks multiplied by 5 days. Every workday, Mondays to Fridays, uh, syempre hindi, mo na, hindi ka, hindi ka skip ng holidays, no? But every every day, mag set, mag, magtatabi ka lang ng 20 pesos. Ito yung ibig ko sabihin dito. You're trying to break down your goals one month at a time, one payday at a time, or one day at a time. Imagine, nagtatabi ka ng 20 pesos kada araw sa loob ng isang taon, 260 days, that will give you 61,000 pesos next year. That 61,000 pesos next year, you will use 13,000 for a milliard, 8,000 for change oil tune up, 40,000 pesos tuition fee. Again, this budgeting plan, this spending plan is fully customizable. Uh, naka formula lang siya uh, dahil ganun ako ka OC. And I'm going to give you a copy of this uh, uh, this sheet uh, after this program. Now, anong importante dito? Anong 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 sense nito ngayon nandoy? After everything said and done, Nakalagay, naka-plug in na ngayon dito yan. How much are you getting monthly net income versus how much are you spending? Total fixed expenses, total controllable expenses. Remember, itong controllable expenses natin, 6,200 kanina to. Pero dahil, dahil hindi ka na nag, namamasahe, hindi ka na nagko-commute, dahil nagbabike ka na lang, naging 5,000 pesos na lang siya. Uh, total periodic expenses, every month you're setting aside 5,083. For next year's periodic expenses, worth 61,000 pesos. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, kung kumikita ka ng ganito kalaking halaga every month, ganito ang ginagastos mo every month, ang tinatabi mo every month, meron ka pang natitirang 9,464 na pwede mong gamitin for either leisure. Remember the 50-30-20 rule for leisure. Pwede mong gamitin for additional savings. Pwede mong gamitin for additional investments. Pwede mong gamitin for insurance. Or pwede mong gamitin for any other uh, uh, important ma uh, matters. No? The important thing there is, alam mo kung magkano ang pumapasok, magkano ang lumalabas, at nagiging responsable ka when it comes to uh, money management. That's the important thing about budgeting. All right? So let's go back to our let's go back to our presentation materials. There you go. So we're now done with uh, the budgeting and spending plan. The idea there is for us to be able to save and invest first. Remember the 50-30-20 rule? Umpisahan natin, unahin natin tanggalin yung 30. Ihiwalay na agad natin. Ako, um, uh, the way I do it, every time I receive my sweldo from my day job from First Metro Securities, I automatically transfer online. Minsan, wini-withdraw ko in cash. I automatically transfer to my other bank account para hindi ko na mag 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 magalaw. Uh, and uh, once, uh, once it gets reflected to my other bank account, uh, dinidistribute ko na. Uh, meron, meron for insurance, meron for uh, investments, meron for stocks, meron for mutual funds. And that's how, I, that, that's how, how, how I've been doing it since 2005. Um, medyo OC, medyo boring, but uh, it gets the job done. So every time we receive something, kanina, every time we receive something, we spend, and then kung ano na lang yung matitira, that's saving and investing. Uh, my paradigm shift recommendation for you is every time you receive something, Unahin na natin ang saving and investing, and then let's uh, let's spend the rest. You know, 50-30-20 rule. Unahin natin yung 30, and then kung ano yung matitira, and yun na yung pang expenses natin for leisure and for regular living expenses. And yun yung 70%. Alright? The way we do it, pag, dahil ganito na yung ini-introduce ko sa inyo na konsepto, 
this allows you to think about spending less for you to be able to save and invest more. Because if you're able to save and invest more, it will eventually provide you with more multiple sources of income. And when you have multiple sources of income, your money is actually making more money. All right. So again, by now, everything should make sense. Kasi napag-usapan natin yung evolution of money, napag-usapan natin yung evolution of banking, napag-usapan natin yung legitimate asset classes, how they behave, how they differ from uh, against each other. At napag-usapan na natin how we can free up money uh, for us to be able to save and invest by way of budgeting. So again, madalas ang pinag-uusapan ng mga investment gurus kasi, ah, let's save ka lang, save ka lang, pilitin mo yung sarili mo, invest ka lang, invest ka lang. Uh, without really looking at the practical uh, problems of Filipinos. Uh, sabi ko nga, ang problema ng Pilipino, walang pera. And this is my my recommendation. Let's try to free up money by being wise when it comes to where, when we're going to use our money. Uh, hindi masamang gumastos, pero wag naman natin gastosin lahat. Again, 50-30-20 rule. When you receive something, uh, automatically you set something aside for saving and investing, 30%. And then the remaining 70%, 20% don pang leisure for us to keep our sanity, and 50% for regular living expenses. All right? So, I say it doesn't matter how little or how big you're earning. You become rich when you start to manage your spending. It, it's... it's uh, Relatable, most probably, uh, for uh, uh, our the working class uh, in attendance, and even for for students. Wag yung isipen na dahil malaki yung magiging sweldo nyo automatically, magiging mayaman na kayo. Wala yon. Uh, for for you to be able to uh, for you to be able to uh, become better money managers, you have to look into your spending. For example. Uh, you're earning 100,000 pesos a month. Malaki yun. 100,000 pesos a month, you're earning uh, that much, pero gumagastos ka ng 120,000 pesos because you're trying to live uh, a very lavish lifestyle. So, bali wala rin. Um, you have a friend earning 25,000 pesos a month, but uh, he makes it a point to invest uh, 8,000 pesos a month. Kagaya nung uh, uh, example natin kanina sa budgeting and spending plan natin. So, you see, 30,000, 25,000 pesos, isipin natin na, wala yan. Uh, napakaliit ng sweldo niya, hindi ayaman yan. But uh, he makes it a point to invest on a regular basis. Walang wala dun sa 100,000 pesos a month, but spending way, way, way more than 100,000 pesos a month. So that's what uh, we're trying to uh, 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 to say, no? yung living below your means. Uh, madalas kasi pag tumataas yung sweldo natin, tumataas din yung lifestyle natin eh. Um, hindi natin napapansin na yung mga bagay na pwede naman nating pagtipiran, yung mga bagay na ginagastos natin, uh, pwede namang hindi natin gastosin uh, yung mga yung mga uh, yung mga extra na binibili natin na pwede namang hindi natin bilhin uh, na nagagawa natin all because we were thinking were 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 lured into this uh, thing called the capitalism no? na, uh, the more the, the 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 more the better uh, the the more expensive the better and of course because of social media uh, we think that uh, uh, the, the the cooler the cooler things we buy the the more expensive things we buy the the better it makes uh, the better per, the, the the better it is for us you know but uh, sabi ko nga hindi masamang gumastos wag lang lahat uh, let's let's try to become better money managers all right now when it comes to uh, Speaking about being better money managers, we now go to the second part uh, of uh, the, the most, the more exciting part of the program, which is for us to talk about money making more money. But in the Philippines, a good thing about that is, again, regardless if you're just a student or you're already working, in the Philippines, a good thing about this is uh, you don't need millions to make millions. That's a good thing about that. Gone are the days when uh, uh, you need... Uh, 500,000 pesos, yung example natin kanina, 500,000 pesos for you to be able to invest in bonds. Gone are the days when you need 100,000 pesos just for you to uh, open uh, a stock brokerage account. Right now, for uh, again, I'm not going to sell, but right now, you don't need a lot for you to open a, a stock brokerage account. Uh, back then, you need 50,000 pesos uh, for you to invest in mutual funds. Um, ngayon, for as little as 5,000 or even 1,000 pesos, 
you may uh, uh, you may start investing again. Doesn't matter if you're already working or you're 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 just a student. A thousand pesos a month will will make a whole lot of difference, and I'm going to prove that to you in a little while. So again, uh, going back, my 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 promise is I'm going to teach you that your money can make more money, and that you don't need millions to make millions, right? So again, in uh, uh, quickly. Let me just uh, share with you that when you talk about saving, you're not talking about investing. Uh, importante to na nakita na natin yung s- deposits versus bonds versus stocks versus real estate. We talk about deposits, yun yung emergency funding. Fixed but low interest income, and uh, those are funds for short-term purchases. And again, for emergency purposes. That's why emergency funding. And growth fund for higher, in uh, because it's giving us higher income potential, low risk, low return. High risk, high return, and uh, these are funds for long-term purchases, uh, milestones, life goals. How do you build an emergency fund? Avoid bad loans. Not all utangs are created equal. Uh, some people uh, borrow money to to invest. Uh, in fact, yung utang bonds bond a bond is an utang. It's a good kind of utang. Avoid bad loans. Yung tipong magung utang ka just for you to be able to buy a. Uh, uh, a brand new gadget, a brand new smartphone, pero you have you have one perfectly functioning uh, smartphone. Uh, gusto mong mag-upgrade, pero uh, wala kang pera, pambiling, pang, pang, pambiling ng upgrade, so magungutang ka. Instead of you putting money in your savings account, instead of you investing, ginagawa mo every month, nagbabayad ka ng utang. And that's a bad loan. Avoid bad loans. Regularly save every payday, every month, every time you receive your allowance up to 30%, kagaya ng pinag-uusapan natin kanina na 50-30-20 rule, and do it uh, only up until you reach a certain milestone, up until 6 to 12 months worth of your monthly expenses for emergency funding. Something na napag-usapan na natin kanina when we were talking about the 50-30-20 rule. And then, what happens next? Andoy, paano pag meron akong ganyang kalaking halagang pera? For example, I'm spending... Uh, 10,000 pesos a month. So, ibig sabihin nun, ideally, dapat meron akong 60,000 to 120,000 pesos na nasa deposits para sa emergency funding ko. Halimbawa, andoy, meron na akong ganun. What's next? What's next is, kung sobra yung pera mo sa deposits, pwede ka nang mag-umpisang mag-invest. Kung meron kang 1 million pesos, pero kailangan mo lang ng 120,000 pesos sa emergency fund, that means you have 880,000 pesos ready for investing. Pero kung ginagawa mo pa lang siya, one payday at a time, at natapos mo na last payday, yung 120,000, next payday ang gagawin mo, maghuhulog ka na sa growth fund mo. How do you do that? If in emergency funding, you need to follow three simple steps in investing, I just need you to follow one. Do it regularly. Every payday, every month, every week, every time you receive your allowance. This is practically step number two in saving. But instead of putting it in your savings pocket, I'd like you to put it in your investments pocket. 50-30-20 rule. Why? Because of inflation. Inflation practically pushes the prices of everything up, which thereby pushes the purchasing power of the Philippine peso down. Back in the 1990s, our 500 peso bill can buy us that much. Rice. 2000s, our 500 peso bill can buy us that much. Pababa ng pababa ang economic value, pero pareho lang ang monetary value. We're still looking at the same 500 peso bill. 2010s, we're looking at a happier Ninoy Aquino because he's now joined by former President Cory Aquino. But as Filipino consumers, we're not as happy because our 500 peso, uh, peso bill can only buy us that much. And who knows if we keep if fast forward to 10 years from now, 2020s might be looking at less and less and less rice. And we might be looking at more and more and more Aquinos. Uh, nothing political, but uh, all I'm really trying to uh, make you understand is inflation should be no laughing matter. Um, uh, I don't care if you don't know how to define inflation. I don't care if you don't know how to compute for inflation. Uh, my goal is uh, for your money to grow better than inflation. Uh, because in reality, our money is not growing better than inflation. If we're just going to keep on saving and saving and saving, our money is just going to go grow this way while inflation is growing that way. Ang ibig sabihin nito, our money, if we just keep on saving, will not grow 
faster, our money will not be able to cope with the rising prices of goods and commodities out there. That's why I want you to save, but I don't want you to save forever. I want you to save for emergency purposes, but I don't want you to keep on saving, putting money, keep on putting money in deposits. Again, because of this. How about investing? Had you invested that amount, a million pesos in uh, an index fund, for example, it would have given you that much opportunity. All right. So you see the difference? Same amount of money, 1,000 pesos, same amount of time, time horizon, 10 years, different results. But I'd, what I'd also like you to understand is when it comes to investing, it's not as safe as saving. Again, let me go back. The lower the risk, the lower the return. The higher the risk, the higher the return. Look at the risks involved in investing. Involved in investing. There were moments when your 1 million pesos fell below a million. And for some, that's a problem. But that's also the reason why, when it comes to stock market investing, I'd like you to keep a long-term time horizon. Because etong nang etong portion na to, this just happened over the, the first one, two, three years. And if go if you're going to extend the time horizon to ten years, the ideal time horizon, ten years, look at the result. That's essentially what I'm trying to drive at. Yeah, sabi ko nga sa inyo, when it comes to the second part of the program, it's going to be faster when it comes to pace. Kasi napag usapan na natin yung basics. I say it's better to take baby steps than getting nowhere at all. I'm going to take 20 pesos a day. Remember yung breakdown natin kanina, 61,000 pesos, ang laking halaga nun. 5,000 pesos every month, 2,500 pesos every payday. But if you're going to break it down one day at a time, that's 20 pesos. It's better to take baby steps and getting nowhere at all. I'm going to take 20 pesos a day than nothing. Yung pa 20, 20 pesos ka, nakaka isang daang piso ka, isang, isang linggo. I'm going to take that compared to being able to save, compared to being, being able to invest nothing. All right, I say smart work smarter, not harder. For you to be able to make your money, make more money. Do more with less. You are doing more with your 30%. Remember, again, the 50-30-20 rule, you are doing more with that future-proofing fund, the 30%. With that crisis-proofing fund, a 30%. You're trying to make your money, make more money. How do you do that? by buying investments instead of just buying stuff. I need you to tell yourself where your money should go instead of always asking yourself where your money went. Which brings me to the Philippine economy. People say the Philippine economy is doing strong uh, despite uh, the Philippine GDP uh, for the first quarter of 2020 uh, plummeting to negative 0.2%. Uh, uh, That's understandable because of the lockdown, because of the economic uh, implications of the lockdown. Uh, but uh, just the same, uh, the Department of Finance is uh, looking at a V-shaped recovery. Uh, they're still very bullish about the Philippine economy. Uh, but the problem is, we're hearing stuff about economic growth. We're reading stuff about economic growth. Um, we're seeing uh, economic growth. But the problem is, Filipinos, we can't feel economic growth. Can't feel economic growth because most or all of our money is saved for safety hardly working, but instead, for us to be able to feel economic growth, our money should be invested for growth, for it, to, for it to be able to work hard. And that's where stocks come in. With stocks, you don't need to be a finance grad, you don't need to be an econ grad, you don't need to have a lot of money, you don't need to understand complex numbers, complex charts, you don't need to put a lot of time uh, monitoring the market. With stocks, you're just buying uh, already existing publicly listed stocks. But the problem is, when it comes to the Philippine stock market, you're going to have to choose from among 280 listed stocks, and 280 is a lot. So what the Philippine Stock Exchange did, they assembled, uh, in basketball terms, what we call all-stars, the best of the best, or the Gilas Pilipinas of stocks. Ito sila. 30 of uh, the heavily traded, 30 of the most profitable, uh, 30 of the most crisis-proof uh, uh, companies in the Philippines. These are your Gilas Pilipinas of stocks. These are your blue-chip stocks or index stocks. They're uh, collectively called the Philippine Stock Exchange Index or the PSEI. And uh, what makes them blue-chips, what makes them in the PSEI, they're historically proven to weather 
economic downturns, crisis, pandemics. They're the biggest in their respective sectors and their respective industries. They're top of mind when it comes to branding that even some of them, they don't even need to hire the services of top endorsers just for people to uh, uh, avail of their products or services. Um, one very uh, popular example there is Meralco. You don't, you don't need to hire the Pia Wurzbachs, the Coco Martins, the, the Piola Pasquals just for you to sell Meralco to the greater Metro Manila area because uh, Meralco is a monopoly. Um, and most importantly, dividends. They're consistent when it comes to dividends. Again, how, what's divid- what are dividends? Profit sharing. How can you share something that you don't have? So this means these companies are profitable. If they're able to uh, give dividends on a consistent basis to their uh, shareholders, stockholders, that means they're profitable. In short, the only way for you to legitimately put your money in the principal drivers of the economy is for you to open businesses, run a business, manage a business, or perhaps invest in stocks. Because in investing in stocks, you own a business without having to run a business. Um, again, I, I, we have we have business owner friends in attendance. Um, uh, I myself, uh, I'm 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 uh, uh, in, into businesses. I'm into I'm I'm running small businesses on the side. Uh, so I know for a fact the difficulties uh, running a business uh, entails. You're going to have to manage people. You're going to have to to be able to manage egos. Uh, you're going to have to be able to manage payroll, taxes, everything. Uh, but again, I'm not discouraging you from from going into business. But if you don't have time for that, if you don't have the expertise uh, for that, if you don't have passion for that, perhaps putting your money in stocks could be the next best thing. Because again, it allows you to own a business without having to run a business. For you to be able to own Jollibee, for example, um, uh, there's no there's no such thing as the stock market. For you to be able to own Jollibee, the only way for you to do that is to buy a franchise. And how much is a Jollibee franchise right now? Pushing 50 million. And when you buy a 50 million peso Jollibee franchise, you're just buying one for me. You're just buying Jollibee. And you are just investing in that location. Kung saan man mapupunta yung franchise mo. Again, guys, I'm not discouraging you from going into franchises. I'm not discouraging you from buying a Jollibee franchise. All I'm really saying is, if you don't have 50 million pesos yet, Perhaps you might want to look into buying Jollibee shares. Jollibee shares worth about 1, 140 pesos, 150 pesos thereabouts. Uh, minimum 10 shares, so that's 1,500, 1,600 pesos. You get to own 10 shares of Jollibee. But you're not just owning Jollibee. You're also co-owning Greenwich, Mang Inasal, Red Ribbon, um, Chow King, um, Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, Pa24, Tim Ho Wan, um, Panda Express uh, and uh, several other businesses here and abroad tucked under the Jollibee Foods Corporation. 140, 150 pesos. Compare that to 50 million pesos. That's the important thing about uh, learning your options. That's the important thing of uh, learning before earning. All right. Alibaba is the biggest online store up until now but owns no inventory. Uber uh, globally, it's the largest taxi company but owns no vehicles. Airbnb, despite laying off 100 workers, still the largest accommodations provider in, in the world but has zero properties. Facebook is the biggest media owner but has no content. Content of Facebook is practically ours. Our selfies, our groovies, our memes, um, uh, our rants about government, our rants about uh, everything. And uh, we, uh, my team, especially in, in First Metro Securities, we'd like to be mentioned in the same breath as, uh, breath as these market disruptors. Because we'd like to make Filipinos make millions without having millions by introducing them to the stock market. The stock market practically provides you an opportunity to be instant business owners, instant entrepreneurs. You get to co-own already successful businesses for as little as 2,000 pesos, 1,000 pesos, 5,000 pesos. You get to co-own the brands that you believe in and have it managed 
by by it being managed by brilliant management teams. Again, you get to co-own a business without having to run a business. You get to own Jollibee without 50 million. You get to own Jollibee without having to run a franchise. Which brings me, of course, to Jollibee. Jollibee has been uh, in my 50, 30, 20, in my 30% uh, every payday, every first payday of the month. Um, admittedly, admittedly, up until now. Um, uh, perhaps, uh, I'm not sure if it's a case of me falling in love with uh, the stock or if it's just a case of me being overly fanatic with, uh, with Jollibee. But uh, after graduating from San Beda 2005, I joined BPI's officership training program 2005. Um, and ever since, every first payday of the month up until now, Jollibee has been part of my... Uh, uh, Jollibee has been part of my uh, 30%. I was able to buy my first set of Jollibee shares for 26 pesos per share. And I just kept on buying every first day of the month up until now. Several, uh, a year ago, uh, it peaked to 328. Uh, and I just kept on buying. Again, up until now. Uh, when when Jollibee uh, bought the coffee bean and tea leaf, I was able to buy for 220. Um, uh, I was able to buy when, when Jollibee dipped to 94. It... it uh, uh, it it went as low as ninety one, but I was able I wasn't able to buy at ninety one. I was able to buy ninety four, ninety seven, thereabouts. And again, up until now, I keep on uh, I keep on buying Jollibee every first day of the month, uh, part of my thirty percent. Uh, I'm showing you this because I'd like you to understand that again, when it comes to stock market uh, investing, long term, more than ten years, fifteen years down the road, I'm making money. Because I am being able, I was able to buy low, and should should I decide to sell, I can still sell high. That's capital appreciation. Every second payday of the month, two thousand five up until now, um, uh, I am uh, investing part of my thirty percent in Meralco. I was able to buy my first set of Meralco shares for twelve. Some uh, two years back, it peaked to almost 400. I still kept on buying. And up until now, I'm still buying Miralco. I'm doing this uh, because, uh, not because I am thinking of uh, selling Jollibee, not because I'm thinking of uh, selling Miralco. I'm doing this because, again, as mentioned, when it comes to stock market investing, you earn two ways. You earn by way of capital appreciation, buying low and selling high, and you earn by way of dividends. Just so you know, this is my uh, a screenshot of my dividend history from Jollibee, 2005 onwards, but it can only capture 2011 onwards. 2019 alone, I was able to receive a total of 2 pesos and 58 centavos from Jollibee when it comes to dividends. But that's 2 pesos and 58 centavos multiplied by the number of shares I have. So, conservatively, assuming I was able to uh, accumulate Let's say 100,000 shares of Jollibee by just buying it one payday at a time every first payday of the month from 2005 onwards. That's 2 pesos and 58 centavos multiplied by 100,000 shares. 258,000 pesos from Jollibee alone, dividends alone, 2019 alone. And if you find Jollibee quite uh, generous, actually Jollibee is not known to be uh, very generous uh, when it comes to dividend payments. This one. Meralco is. 2019 alone, despite having a bad year, just like Jollibee, on a bad year, Meralco gave me a total of 16.05. Again, same assumptions as Jollibee. Let's say I was able to accumulate just 100,000 shares conservatively by buying its second payday of the month from 2005 onwards. That's 16.05 multiplied by 100,000 shares before taxes. That's 1.6 million pesos. Meralco alone, 2019 alone, on a bad year at that, dividends alone. Guys, uh, please don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not conducting this webinar. I'm not sharing this uh, for, for, for me to brag. I'm doing this because I'd like you to realize, I'd like you to understand that if I was able to do it, why can't you? Because I, I, I didn't, I'm not using any, any magic trick. I'm not using any any 
I, I'm not using technical analysis. I'm not using charts. Um, all I'm really uh, using is uh, some sort of discipline and consistency. That every first payday of the month, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy that. Every second payday of the month, I'm still going to subscribe to the 50, 30, 20 rule. I'm going to invest 30% here, uh, broken down in Meralco, mutual funds, FM ETF. That has always been the case. And I fell in love with that. I fell in love with that grind. And again, if, 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 if I was able to do it, why can't you? I never needed millions. I never needed millions. I just needed 30% of my payday every single, uh, every single time. And that's what I've been doing up until now. Um, every time I receive something from, uh, uh, from, from business deals, every time I receive something from, uh, uh, from, uh, from other sources, uh, every time I get to sell a car, every time I get to sell a dog, every time, again, every time I receive something, I always make it a point to take away 30%. Again, up until now, um, uh, I, I, I sell a, second, a second-hand car, I sell a second-hand shoe, I sell uh, 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 a used appliance. 30% goes to saving and investing. That's how I do it, up until now. No matter how small that 30% is, that's what I do. And uh, I, I encourage you guys to do the same. Because again, at the end of the day, you're trying to future-proof yourself. You yourselves, you're trying to crisis proof yourselves and your family. All right. So, again, the idea is for us to uh, spot small companies until they become big, or perhaps in the case of Jollibee and Meralco, invest in the biggest companies in the Philippines with the potential to make it global. Um, uh, in in, in, uh, in the, the index stocks, the 30 of the best in the Philippines, you have uh, several companies with. Uh, already within international exposure. Again, you have Jollibee, you have branches abroad, you have SMs, you have Bolts abroad. Uh, what else? You have uh, Universal Rubina Corporation importing uh, uh, juices, drinks, and uh, uh, snacks abroad. Uh, you have Emperador, uh, and uh, of course, several others. You know? uh, that's that's uh, essentially the idea. You don't necessarily have to invest in Jollibee and Miralco uh, as well. Because there are so many other options out there, all right? Now, what if you're not the stock market type of person? What if uh, you don't have time to pick from among the 30 blue chip stocks? What if you don't have time to pick from among 280 uh, listed corporations? Perhaps mutual funds could be for you. Mutual funds are uh, professionally managed pooled funds from investors with uh, the same investor profile uh, for, from from investors who are uh, com comfortable in investing in money market, in, in bonds, in stocks, or in properties, the mutual fund companies pooling their money together, similar similar personalities. And then um, uh, it gets managed by a fund manager. It gets invested in uh, the right basket of uh, asset classes, as we've discussed. And then by the time they generate income, they get passed back on to you as investors. Um, the good thing about that is, again, regardless of your personality, um, Andoy, I'm just uh, the, the short-term uh, uh, investor, then you have money market. Andoy, I'm, I'm very much inclined to invest in bonds. So Again, you have bond funds. Andoy, how about uh, a mix of bonds and stocks? You have balanced funds. And Andoy, how about uh, aggressive type? I, I'm aggressive. I don't want exposure in bonds. I want 100% uh, equities. You have equity funds. Uh, money market, again, you're talking about investing in uh, deposit and deposit instruments, short-term government uh, bills, bonds, investing in uh, corporate or go government bonds, uh, uh, a number of them, balance, 65-35 mix uh, when it comes to bonds versus equities. Uh, some can go as high as 50-50, but uh, uh, the, ideal, uh, break, the, the ideal allocation is 65-35. And of course, equity funds. Not 100% invested in equities uh, because they need to uh, allow for uh, liquidity, about 5%, 10% liquidity for, for withdrawals, to, to, to fund withdrawals. And of course, you have uh, index funds or those investing in only the Gilas Pilipinas of stocks or the all-stars of stocks. Um, there are a, a mutual funds who are just investing in the best of the best. And again, we call them blue chip stocks or index funds. Uh, the good thing about mutual funds, uh, why, why do you need to consider investing in funds? The good thing about mutual funds, 
investors like you, regardless if you are just a student uh, or already working, investors like you can afford to invest in higher yielding securities that uh, individually you can't afford to invest in. Uh, kasi, you, again, you are pooling your money together. Uh, in best na mag invest ka ng 50 million pesos sa uh, Jollibee franchise, you're pooling your money together with other 50 people, you're just going to invest 1 million. That's uh, essentially the, the concept behind pooling money together for, for mutual funds. Um, uh, of course, it's legitimate. It has uh, uh, a law of its own. It's established under RA2629 or the Investment Company Act. Uh, it's tax-free. Earnings from mutual funds are exempt from capital gains tax. Again, it's not a scam because it's registered at uh, registered at and regulated heavily by the Securities Exchange Commission. Um, this is also the reason why I am licensed, why I have a license with the SEC, uh, for me to be able to talk about, trade, and uh, teach about mutual funds. Uh, investors can benefit from full-time uh, and expert fund managers so that uh, you no longer have to make the decision-making. You're practically outsourcing the decision-making, the trading, uh, sa mga fund managers. And of course, liquidity. You can buy mutual funds without having to look for sellers. Hindi ka gaya ng sa stocks. Uh, hindi ka pwedeng bumili kung walang nagbebenta. Uh, sa mutual funds, pag, nag, pag bumili ka at walang nagbebenta, the mutual fund company will sell shares to you. Same thing with the stocks. Sa stocks, uh, you can't sell without... Uh, you, you can't sell pag walang buyers. Siyempre, hindi ka makakapagbenta sa isang market, sa isang palengke, pag walang bumibili. Pero sa mutual funds, pwede kang magbenta kahit walang bumibili kasi bibili niyan ng mutual fund company. So that talks about liquidity. Um, instant diversification. You stock, I'm talking about uh, portfolio management. Uh, wag, lang, wag lang sa stocks, wag lang sa uh, bonds, wag lang sa deposits, wag lang sa real estate. The mutual funds provide you with instant diversification. Kasi pag bumili ka ng isang fund, meron ka ng 20 to 30 to 40 various investments inside that fund. Yung tinatawag natin na underlying assets, underlying securities. That means you can spread your wealth across deposits, bonds, stocks, and even real estate by buying just one, two, or three mutual funds. It's uh, affordable because it allows you to invest in legitimate outlets without having to spend a fortune. And again, most importantly, there's a perfect match for you. There's a mutual fund for every type of investor, from conservative to aggressive to somewhere in between. Um, comparing it to a stock, para lang mas uh, makita natin yung difference, comparing it to a stock, sa stocks kasi you are the driver. You tell yourself when to stop, where to stop to buy Jollibee. You also tell yourself where to stop and when to stop for you to sell Jollibee. Just like what I've been doing. But again, I'm not just 100% exposed to stocks. I also have investments in mutual funds. How, how are mutual funds different from stocks? Some mutual funds, sabi ko nga sa inyo, may fund manager ka. You're outsourcing uh, several key decisions to your mutual funds, uh, your mutual fund manager. And that mutual fund manager of yours is practically your driver. You have a driver. The, but ang, ang problema dito, your driver chooses the destination. Hindi siya nakikinig sa'yo. No matter how you love Jollibee, kung ayaw ng mutual fund manager mo na bumili ng Jollibee, wala kang magagawa. You are paying your mutual fund manager to make decisions for you, to make money for you, not to listen to you. So, that's it uh, when it comes to stocks versus mutual funds. No? Um, uh, I also would like to introduce to you guys... Um, an ETF or an exchange traded fund. An ETF is uh, a hybrid between a stock and a mutual fund. An ETF is actually a mutual fund listed in the stock market. But uh, the good thing about ETF in the Philippines is we only have one. Again, I'm not selling anything to you guys, but it just so happened that that ETF is ours. It's what we call the First Metro Philippine Equity Exchange Traded Fund or FM ETF. Um, aside from it being a mutual fund listed in the stock market, it's also an index tracker fund, which means if you buy FM ETF, you're just buying the best of the best stocks, the Gilas Pilipinas of stocks, the blue chip stocks. Uh, individually, if you're going to buy blue chip stocks, even uh, at, uh, at this uh, point in time when, when uh, prices are relatively cheap, you're still going to have to spend a fortune. So you're going to have to spend about 600,000, 700,000 pesos, about, give or take. 
And that's a lot, especially if you're just a student, especially if you're just trying to uh, start investing. 700,000 pesos is a lot. So what we did with FMETF, we're buying everything, all 30 of them. We're buying them, we're putting them in one basket. That basket is what we call the FMETF, and that basket is something you may buy for as little as 85 pesos per share. For marketing purposes, we're just using 1,500. 85 pesos per share, give, give or take about 1,700, 1,800 pesos, it gives you about 20 shares of FMETF. Imagine for 85 pesos per share, you get to invest in the best of the best companies in the Philippines. 30 of the best companies in the Philippines without spending a fortune. Buy one, get 30. Buy one FM ETF, get 30 of the best performing stocks in one basket. We like it because it's, affor of course, affordable, super simple, and most importantly, it's tradable. Pwede mo siyang bili ng umaga, tapos benta mo in the afternoon, no problem about that. Because there's no holding period, because again, it's a stock. It's so good, it's awarded as the best emerging market exchange traded fund, and uh, our team from First Metro Asset Management, they were awarded as the best emerging market ETF manager. All right. Now, we now go to the justification why investing long-term in stocks is profitable. I'm sharing you uh, uh, a graphical uh, representation of uh, the global market uh, when it comes to uh, long-term investments. This is from 1870. 1870. Ganun siya katagal. Centuries ago. 1870. Up until 2020s. So if you're going to notice, it it includes it 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 encompasses a lot of crisis, pandemics, wars, economic economic crisis. Um, look at this um, depression, um, World War One and influenza, World War Two, Vietnam War, Black Monday. Uh, SARS, MERS-CoV, whatnot. It it includes everything. But despite those, despite those uh, crises, despite those problems in the global economy, if you're going to look at the overall trajectory, it's still upwards. Pero andoy, wag natin pag-usapan yung global. Sa Pilipinas tayo. It's not about the Philippines. So be it. I also prepared something for you locally. This one from 1987 up until 2017. If you're going to look at it, 30 years. I'm even highlighting the problem points. Asian financial crisis, Estrada impeachment, SARS, dot-com bubble, um, global financial crisis, Euro sovereign debt, MERSCOV, Brexit, OPEC, not it's, it doesn't even include uh, COVID-19. But what you're going to notice is, despite these problems, you're also going to notice that they didn't last forever. 10 months, 6 months, 3 months, 9 months, 5 months, 4 months. And then the market just completely rebounded. And again, if you're going to look at it from a long-term perspective, you're looking at growth. And charts don't lie. Numbers don't lie. That's the reason why up until now, I am still confident that if you start investing now and just keep on doing it on a regular basis, 20 pesos a day, one five a month, 3,000 a month, uh, there's no way. There's, there's no reason for us to, to, not, not to not to make money. There's no reason for us not to be able to take advantage of the current situation of the stock market. The valuation, the, the attractive valuations being presented by uh, 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 the blue chip stocks. There's no reason why we shouldn't take advantage of this opportunity. Again, because of things like this. All right. Which brings me to this. A justification why it's very important for you to start early. Again, this is... Uh, not just for the benefit of uh, the students in attendance, this is also for the benefit of uh, those who weren't, who aren't still uh, investing. So, let me just be very clear with you. The assumption here is every year, 
the Philippine stock market is going to average about 11% per annum. There are going to be, again, you're looking at averages. So there could be times when it's doing negative, less than 11, more than 11, but on the average, 11.03%. Because this has been the average for the past 10 years, 2019 below. Had you invested, had you started investing when you're just 20 years of age, and you're going to invest one five per payday, or 3,000 a month, and you're going to do that for retirement purposes. So you're going to do that over the next 40 years. That's your time horizon. Your total out of pocket will just be 1.4 million pesos. Again, over that 40 year span, regardless how, of how many promotions you've had, vice president kana, um, consultant kana, director kapa, and dami mong and dami mong kinikitang pera from your your activities. Ang ginagawa mo pa rin, tatlong libo pa rin kada buwan. That's, that's the assumption in this, uh, in this uh, example. So hindi mo sinusunod yung 50-30-20 rule. Kasi 50-30-20, habang tumataas yung sweldo mo, tumataas din yung 50-30-20 mo. Hindi mo sinusunod yun. Ginagawa mo lang 3,000 kada buwan. Ganun lang ginagawa mo. That's the assumption in this example. But still, even if you're just doing that, look at the results. If you're going to save three, invest 3,000 a month, one five per payday over the next 40 years, your total out of pocket will just amount to 1.4 million pesos. Sa loob ng 40 years na yun. And if the stock market continues to re return an average of 11% per annum over the next 40 years, you get an extra retirement money of about 22 million pesos. But what if you don't start early? What if, Andoy, I'd like to YOLO from 20 to 30. I'm going to start investing by the time I turn 30. Again, because you only live once. Let's do 30. And then you tell me, Andoy, I'm going to start investing at age 30. But using your example, I'm going to double that amount. Instead of me investing 3,000 a month, I'm going to invest 6,000. So be it. 30 years of age, facial hair and all, from 3,000 to 6,000, you lost 10 years of time, time horizon. If you start 30, you just have 30 years until retirement. Your total out of pocket increases from 1.4 to 2.1. So it's more expensive for you to invest. What? Even if it's more expensive for you to invest because you lost 10 years. Remember, I equals PRT. Interest is equal to principal times rate times time. You lost 10 years under that time. Your expected retirement Lock money ita. your expected retirement money will decrease from 22 million to 15 million. But then again, 15 million is still 15 million. I'm not going to complain at 15 million pesos. All right. Uh, so there. If if you're going to look at it, uh, the, if you're going to look at it, the promises are still there. If you're going Hello. to look at it, Get on. Get on. Hmm? hold on, just uh, mute one participant. There you go. I think she uh, accidentally unmuted herself. There you go. So again, the, the common thing here is. Remember my promises when we were just about to start that I'm going to teach you how to make your money make more money and I'm going to make you realize that you don't need millions to make millions. Look at this. Your money making more money. Your money making more money. You making millions without having millions. Making millions without having millions. At 15 million pesos, are you going to complain and not going to complain? 15 million is 15 million. But let's say, Andoy, I won't invest at 20. I won't invest at 30. I'm going to invest at 40. Because my mom said life begins at 40. And based on your examples, I'm going to, instead of me uh, investing 3,000 a month, instead of me investing 6,000 a month, I'm going to double that. I'm going to invest 12,000 a month. So be it. At 40, even if you're investing 12,000 a month, you lost 20 years of time horizon. 
your total out-of-pocket increases from 1.4 to 2.1 to 2.8 million pesos. So again, it's more expensive for you to invest. But despite shelling out more, even if the stock market continues to return 11% per annum, expect an extra retirement money of about 10 million pesos. Again, still not bad. I still not bad. I mean, I I, I wouldn't uh, I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't say no to an extra 10 million pesos. But then again, uh, my my message here is very clear. If you're going to start investing very very early, it's going to take less and less and less money off of your pockets and it's going to provide you with better and better and better returns because of your time horizon all right so again uh what else uh andoy how about 50 i'm not going to save or invest 20 i'm not going to start at 30 i'm not going to start at 40 i'm going to wait until i get promoted until i get like, until i become uh, uh the president of the company until i open several businesses and that's the only time i'm going to start investing and so be it so from three thousand a month to six thousand a month to twelve thousand a month let's say you can now afford to invest twenty four thousand a month but regardless you lost 50 years of time horizon you only have 10 years of time horizon before you turn 60 before you retire total out of pocket increases from 1.4 to 2.1 to 2.8 million pesos. So again, it's more expensive for you to invest. So regardless if you are shelling out 24,000 pesos a month, shelling out a total of 2.8 million pesos in 10 years, your extra retirement money, just uh, assuming the stock market uh, averages 11% per annum, it's just 5 million pesos. But then again, 5 million pesos is still 5 million pesos. I won't say no to 5 million pesos. So the common denominator across all these uh, examples, our money, making more money, we making millions without having millions. So again, the value here, the important lesson here is I want you to as much as possible start early. And for the parents out there, for our attendees, I'd like you to start encouraging your kids you know, uh, to become uh, uh, financially responsible to become better money managers. Again, you, we've seen the, the value of 20 pesos a day. Uh, being able to save 20 pesos a day, 61,000 pesos in, in, in a year, uh, it, 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 uh, it's mind-boggling uh, for, for some, but uh, it's, it's doable. So if you think that, uh, you, if, if, if you feel, if you know that you can't bring back your 20-year-old self, 30, 40-year-old self, you might want to influence others uh, uh, and, and join them, uh, help them, encourage them uh, to uh, to start saving and investing uh, at a very early age. Now, again, uh, no regrets because what you can still do is more important than you, what you may have failed to do. Huwag niyo isipin na, Andoy, hindi na, sayang. Matanda na ako, hindi na para sa akin yan, sayang. Hindi na ako makapag-start ng 20. Um, there's still time. Uh, th there's still time. Uh, I don't want you to live a life full of regrets, full of what ifs. Uh, I'd like you to make the most out of what's given to you, uh, and uh, I'd like you to start now, regardless, all right? Because less than one percent of Filipinos invest, but almost fifty percent of the po the population is on social media. It only takes us five minutes. It only takes me five minutes every payday to transfer money uh, uh, for, for investment purposes. And another perhaps five minutes for me to buy stocks, for, for, for buy, to, to buy mutual funds. Five minutes. But that's nothing compared to Filipinos averaging about three hours and 42 minutes a day on social media. This is probably higher right now because of the lockdown. But... Uh, Three hours, 42 a day on productive time, that's a lot. I'm just asking you for five minutes per payday for you to save, for you to invest online without having to leave your house. Only 10% of Filipinos save, but 83% of us have smartphones worth more than 50,000 pesos. And you keep on telling me, Andoy, I can't save, I can't invest because I don't have money. Andoy, I can't save, I can't invest because I don't know about saving and investing. Remember the top three reasons why Filipinos aren't saving or investing? They don't have money. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have discipline. Something I'm pretty confident we've talked about, we've tackled over this uh, more than two-hour session of hours, which 
right about to to, to end. Every time you 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 get faced with uh, with a decision with choices, uh, again for for the, the students in attendance, uh, sa nakong magtatrabaho, um, uh, it's uh, almost five o'clock, so merienda time. Uh, anong kakainin ko? Anong papa deliver ko? Um, after this lockdown, sa nakong magtatravel, bakasyon, um, even when it comes to choosing our life partners, the common denominator is we'd all like to arrive at the best possible choice. And I'm one with you. I agree with you. Same thing when it comes to money. Regardless of your weapon of choice, deposits, bonds, stocks, real estate, mutual funds, doesn't matter. The common denominator is I would like you to arrive at the best possible choice. I say never settle for the average. When it comes to your hard-earned money, you have all the right to be choosy. Again, that's that's your money. That's that's your 30%. That's your 30%. Uh, that's a 30% of your money you 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 devoted not to set not not to spend that's a uh, 30% of your money for future proofing that's 30% of your money for crisis proofing and i think that's where we come in because we happen to be the best in the business best broker in the philippines best online broker with the best online trading platform we allow our clients to invest in stocks in mutual funds and in exchange traded funds all under one account Mutual funds from ALFM, ATR Asset Management, PhilM Asset Management, First Metro Asset Management, Phil Equity, and the real Piola Pascual Sun Life. Multi-asset, multi-currency, online. Stocks, mutual funds, FM ETF, under one account. Minus the forms, because everything's online and paperless. Minus the queuing, because everything right there, no need for you to go out. Minus the sales loads, minus the fees and commissions, because when it comes to mutual funds, you're not talking to an agent. So you invest most of your money. You get the most out of your money. And minus the hassle. Everything. Convenient. We have a backup site, just in case our main site uh, goes down. We have www.firstmetrosec.ph. We have the most advanced trading platform in First Metrosec Go for day traders. And we have the most advanced trading app in the Philippines in First Metro Sec Go, something you may download for free whether you are running on Android or iOS. We have timely and actionable daily research reports. We're going to tell you which stocks are okay to buy, which stocks are okay to sell, which stocks are worth staying away from on a daily basis. That's fundamental analysis for free. We also happen to have a robot, an artificial intelligence embedded in our platform, uh, which provides you with free technical analysis across all stocks, across all listed stocks. We have multiple funding options. Metro Bank, online uh, bills payment, PS Bank bills payment, BDO bills payment, BPI bills payment for free. And on the other side of things, Land Bank, MasterCard credit card, Visa credit card, Gcash, Coins.ph, and soon, Paymaya for a fee. But everything there for your convenience. And we also happen to have the best market education programs in the country. This uh, being part of it, uh, because we want you to learn from the best. This is me and my team, and we're doing this absolutely for free. Because we want you to learn as a group, in the comforts of your own office, campus, or in your case, at home. We're customizing presentation uh, based on the audience's profile. So if in case you guys would like to... Uh, invite me over for a webinar for your family, for your friends, for your office mates, for your classmates. Uh, just let me know. Uh, even if uh, even if uh, uh, you'd like us to deliver it in English or Tagalog or Taglish or Bisaya, just let me know. Because again, we can do it. Uh, I have uh, I have uh, 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 quite a number of talented members in in my team. And uh, just let me know. So really all a matter of scheduling and we're going to make that happen. All right. Uh, again, this allows uh, the voluntary investment program. We allow companies uh, to allow their employees to invest in stocks, mutual funds, by a salary deduction for as little as one five per payday, one five a month. We are completely paperless uh, from statements to account opening. So again, just in case you guys are interested in opening your very own stock market accounts, for students though, you need to have a tax identification number, TIN. Um, uh, it's very important for you to have a TIN because apart from being your stockbroker, 
we're also going to act as your withholding agent. So having a 10 is a requirement. Uh, the good thing about that is, especially uh, after, uh, as soon as BIR opens its doors to uh, uh, applications, wala pa kasing online 10 applications as far as I'm concerned, no? as far as I know. Um, uh, applying for a 10 is free. And that 10 you're going to apply, even for as a student, that's uh, the same 10 you're going to use by the time you start working. So you're actually advancing one step uh, ahead. Um, because the requirements are pretty much super simple. You just need to have a 10, uh, a valid government ID, PRC ID, driver's license, um, proof of billing, and uh, you're good. The first step is for you to visit www.firstmetrosec.com.ph and click open an account. During this lockdown, during this lockdown, account opening uh, can, can only be done from 2 p.m. until 7 a.m. the next day uh, because we're trying to uh, make sure that our, our system is uh, fully capable of trades uh, from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. So account opening can only be done until, from 2 p.m. until 7 a.m. the next day, every day, but uh, the entire weekend puede. So again, first step, www.firstmetrosec.com.ph and then click open an account. And then just complete the online form. This is just going to set you back mga 5 to 10 minutes. You're just going to include what, what's, what's, what's your preferred username, what's your password, what's your name, where do you live, what's, go, what's your bank account. Uh, pretty much uh, the standard, standard, uh, standard stuff. That's the second step. Third step is for you to upload your documents online. Again, everything is paperless. No need to go to our office. No need to submit forms. No need to mail forms. Everything uh, using your phone online paperless. Remember, though, that uh, uh, before you get your account activated, it should have at least 2,500 pesos in initial investments. But because of this webinar, because of uh, you guys attending this webinar, um, we're waiving this requirement off. I am waiving this 2,500 peso requirement off for as long as when you get asked, uh, how did you learn about us? When you get to this point, when you get asked by the system, oh, how did you learn about First Metro Securities? Just click seminar or event and just type in my name, Andoy Beltran, so that our customer service team can activate your account minus the 2,500 peso uh, initial investment. That initial investment is not uh, a registration fee. In fact, uh, kung kahit hindi siya ma-waive that 2,500 peso is readily investable. That's yours. That's not ours. Hindi siya maintaining balance. No? So it's readily investable. I'm just actually making it more convenient for you to open an account uh, para hindi na kayo magpa-fund before it gets activated. So again, when you get asked, how did you learn about us? This is normally nasa step number two eh, to complete the form. Click seminar or event and just, just type in my name. All right. So there you go. Uh, if you'd like to get to know more about us, that's our website, www.firstmetrosec.com.ph. Um, we're everywhere on social media. We have Facebook, we have a YouTube channel, um, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram um, uh, for invites, for speaking engagement invites, because I'm, I'm not just talking about stocks or finance. I also talk about leadership. I also talk about uh, everything in between. Wag lang make up tutorials, no? Hindi ko pa ginagawa yun. But uh, for invites, that's my email address, abeltan at firstmetrosec.com.ph um, uh, I'm on social media uh, at, at Andoy Beltran. And again, I'm also the guy behind Let's Invest PH on Facebook and at Let's Invest, Invest PH on Instagram. Um, uh, what else? Uh, guys, I'm also strongly encouraging you uh, to uh, 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 join our Facebook community, First Metro Securities uh, uh, Facebook community, so that you learn from others. Uh, and who knows, baka sa mga susunod, kayo yung mag magturo sa iba, uh, dun sa community namin. Uh, I'm also encouraging you to post your feedback, uh, screenshots of this webinar, o kung ano yung mga natutunan nyo dito sa webinar na to. Uh, just so other members uh, are aware that uh, we're doing webinars like this and uh, para rin makita ng mga boss ko na may, may ginagawa akong mga panahon na to. Uh, but again, in all seriousness, I'm encouraging all of you guys to uh, 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 join this Facebook community. And then, uh, of course, lastly, uh, I'm also encouraging you guys to uh, accomplish our online uh, feedback form, www.bit.ly slash fmsfinlit uh, para 
ma- malaman ko ano yung mga nagustuhan nyo, ano yung mga hindi nyo nagustuhan sa, para sa mga susunod na uh, uh, pagkakataon na gagawin ko tong gantong program, alam ko kung ano yung dapat kong iwasan at alam ko kung ano yung mga uh, dapat kong i-retain. No? So, uh, that being said, uh, we're actually 20, 30 minutes uh, past uh, the two-hour uh, 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 deadline. But uh, then again, uh, as parting shot, we've talked about uh, investing not really guaranteed. That's true because when it comes to investing, there's no guarantee. Uh, but uh, what I can, uh, what I'm certain about, what I can, uh, uh, what I'm sure about is that if you don't invest, nothing will happen. That I think is something I can guarantee. So there you go. Uh, this has been Andoy Beltran thanking you for spending your uh, last two hours and a half with me. And uh, if uh, there are questions, 